Joyce is beaten up by her boyfriend for accidentally touching the delivery man's fingertips while picking up a package. He scolds her for being shameless and horny. To punish her, he sets fire to her apartment. He loves Joyce so much that he won't tolerate her touching any man. The more she freaks out, the more excited her boyfriend gets, and he whispers in her ear like a demon. You will never escape from me. Only death. After a few years of torture, Joyce finally had enough. With the help of her bestie, she manages to escape and move to a new city. Bruised and exhausted, she carelessly slipped and fell down the stairs. Luckily, she is caught by Carl, a handsome muscular guy right behind her. He asks for her room number and offers to help. Joyce fears he's a pervert, so she lies and says she lives in room 301. Carl is slightly confused when he hears his apartment number, but he doesn't nail a lie. He simply lifts her suitcase to his door and flirts with her. Enjoy your day, 301 girl. Only when he completely disappears from view does Joyce walk next door to 302. Late at night, the loud moaning coming from room 301 makes it difficult for her to sleep. She bangs on the door of 301 to give her neighbor a good talking to. That's when Carl got the idea that he wanted to know more about her. You know, I'm actually in the middle of something right now, but uh, can I take your number or something? Unless you want to join, of course. I don't think your moaner over there would find that offer appealing. Now, don't worry about her. If you're actually interested. To keep her vulnerability from being revealed along with her scars, Joyce pretends to be a heartless woman. But what if I don't like to share, Carl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even in your wildest dreams, little boy. Don't make your playdate wait. If you don't want to miss your five star review on Tinder, tough guy. She intends to scare him off, but it backfires. Carl is more attracted to her feisty personality than her beautiful face. He returns to the room and intentionally increases the intensity of his workout, causing her to come back to him. Just as annoying as she is, his roommate, Andy. He mistakes Joyce for one of Carl's tens of thousands of fans and urges her to try again tomorrow. Joyce clarifies that she has no interest in Carl and is here to complain about the noise. When Carl hears her voice, he immediately dumps his playmate and courts her praise. Enjoy the show. Oh, Carl, you're so big. Not impressed. Lousy acting. Andy is totally amazed by her because she's the first woman he's ever met who isn't interested in Carl. Carl, on the other hand, is in a state of utter frustration. He couldn't understand why Joyce was so mean to him when she was so nice to other men. After settling down for a while, Joyce applies for a job as a mediator and starts working. Mrs. Smith, with a sad face, came to tell her plight. She shows a scar on her neck and cries about being beaten by her son. And the reason she's suffering is probably because she didn't prepare dinner for him. Joyce empathizes with the fact that even though she's the victim, she doesn't blame him, saying that he's just a little angry sometimes. Just like when she was beaten up by her boyfriend in the past, she felt that everything was her fault. Everything I do angers him even more. Joyce is having a hard time dealing with her problems. After all, she hasn't even gotten over the trauma of the domestic violence. She plans to ask someone to go to her house to investigate, but she changes her mind when she discovers that Mrs. Smith lives near her childhood apartment and is her neighbor. She approaches her best friend Claire and asks what she should do. Worried that it will keep bringing back painful memories, Claire suggests she quit her job. However, she isn't going to run away this time. I was lucky enough to have your help when I escaped. I need to help those victims realize they deserve better. While her job is on the line, her matchmaker arrives on the scene. Andy spent his days downstairs smoking cigarettes to get a chance to talk to Joyce alone. As Carl's best friend, obviously, he can tell that Carl is head over heels for Joyce. So he decides to give Carl's romance a boost. But this helpful man underestimates Joyce's resistance to falling in love. Joyce has just crawled out of the hell of male violence and has vowed never to set foot in a romantic graveyard again. He's really not a bad guy. And I gotta say, there's a vibe between you two. <laughs> a vibe? Yeah. I just want to kill him for not letting me sleep, okay? Maybe she can fool men with her stone-hearted disguise, but she can't hide it from Claire. Claire knows all too well how much she longs for a real relationship, even if her heart is broken. So she takes Joyce to a billiard hall in search of her prey. Coincidentally, the two men Claire hooks up with are Carl and Andy. Claire is attracted to the sunny and cheerful Andy and asks him to join her team. Joyce and Carl become partners in the competition by accident. 
desperate for a wedding toast, Andy pulls out all the matchmaking tricks he's learned in his life. So let's make this interesting. How about the losing couple has to kiss each other? Huh? When Joyce has lost a few games, Carl grabs her hands and tries to correct her grip. Joyce shakes it off and refuses Mr. Noel's kindness. As you would expect, Joyce was defeated. The two matchmakers are very proud and urge them to honor their bet. You two got a kiss. You did this on purpose, huh? I bet you've just wanted to kiss me since day one. Stop dreaming. Sorry. Gambling bets are binding. Joyce is angry that he's treating her feelings like a child's plaything, so she throws down the clubs and runs away. Back off! Why do you keep pushing me away? You have feelings for me. I can feel it. I don't want to play your games. Stubborn kid. The innocent Joyce can't resist the Playboy's temptation and loses her self control. But as the kiss intensified, scenes of her ex boyfriend hurting her came back to her. Joyce is overcome with fear and pushes Carl away. That's when Carl realizes she's wearing something familiar on her wrist. He excitedly presses her to tell him where the bracelet came from. Joyce stammers out that it was a gift from a sweet lady. She runs away as if afraid of her secret being exposed. Carl instantly realizes that she is the girl he's been looking for for years. He stares at the picture of his dead mother and promises to protect Joyce. Contrary to his fondness, Joyce doesn't recognize him as her childhood friend and is disgusted with him, because she's convinced he's a womanizer. Gazing at the bruises from her ex-boyfriend's beatings, she warns herself she can't fall for the pretty boy trick again. At midnight, along with this fear, a nightmare strikes. Her panicked calls penetrate the walls. As soon as Carl hears it, he realizes something is wrong. Fearing something had happened to her, he knocked hard on her door. In desperate need of comfort, Joyce jumps into his arms, desperate for a little love. Carl makes flirty comments to try and ease her fears, but that sets off her scum detection radar. She warned herself she couldn't fall in love again and kicked him out the door. The next morning, she packed up and headed to the office. While going through the neighborhood crime files, she accidentally found a report on Carl. He spent six months in jail for violent conduct against his dad? The vaguely painful scars on her body seem to remind her that Carl is a domestic abuser. So when Carl picks up her keys for her and asks why she's so gloomy, her first reaction is, run away. Puzzled, Carl goes after her and asks why she always pushes him away and if he did something wrong. Joyce says in no uncertain terms that she would never stay with a domestic abuser. Carl realizes that she has read the file, but he doesn't explain. He just lets her run away, because the crime was too complicated. Joyce goes to the bar and gets drunk, cursing herself. She'd been hurt so badly by the violent monsters, but she still feels attracted to these types. Andy notices that she's been treating Carl strangely lately. In order for Carl to get happy, he finds Joyce and tries to redeem Carl's notorious reputation. He makes it clear that Carl may be a bit of a jerk, but he's definitely not a cold-hearted bad guy. But Joyce doesn't listen. She says she won't forgive a man who beats his father. Andy realized she'd misunderstood Carl. But for some reason, he couldn't tell her what Carl had been through. The way he stammers makes her think that there's more to Carl's crime than that. So she makes up her mind to stay away from Carl. Whenever he shows up, she either ignores him or runs away. After a long time of being given a cold shoulder by her, Carl stops trying to please her and goes to others to make her see the truth. Soon after, Joyce receives a call from Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith invites her to dinner to discuss how to help the victims get over it. To her surprise, Carl is at Mrs. Smith's house. To add to her horror, Mrs. Smith's violent son gives her a creepy look. Carl shoves him away and puts food on the table. Joyce realizes that Carl has known Mrs. Smith for a long time and has been helping her. Mrs. Smith's son is terrified of his fists. After dinner, Mrs. Smith starts to put in a good word for Carl. Carl is like a crab. He's tough on the outside, but soft and yummy on the inside. Hearing that everyone around him has such high praise for him, Joyce thinks she's really misunderstood him. Maybe there's a reason why he was so violent with his father. No longer afraid of his approach, she walks side by side with him under the starlight back to the apartment. However, a bloody letter taped to her door shattered her tranquility. Mind your own damn business, or I will. Suddenly she recalls a strange call she received yesterday. She couldn't see who was on the other end of the line and thought someone had dialed the wrong number. 
but now she feels that everything is wrong, and she even suspects that her ex-boyfriend has found her. Carl has no idea how perverted her ex-boyfriend is and thinks it's a stalker hassling her. So Carl breaks into her apartment to see if anyone's hiding. After finding no signs of intrusion, he calms down and begins to comfort Joyce. I'm not gonna let anyone hurt you, okay? It feels so safe when we hug. When the crisis is over, they kiss each other and put aside their prejudices. Afterward, he says he won't leave her alone. He's staying to protect her until he finds out who's threatening her. To prevent Joyce from kicking him out, he says he won't do anything to her and sleeps on the couch. Just as the two of them are getting into a flirtatious mood, there's a sudden ringing of the doorbell. Joyce gets up to answer the door, unaware of the danger that lurks outside. How will their relationship change with the arrival of an unexpected guest? What is the secret behind Carl's violent behavior? Will this good-looking couple find the redemption they are destined for? This is Rainbow Movie. Click the link in the comments section to watch more episodes and the full short drama. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.